All right, so um, as Elder Esplin introduced, I am Sister Nancy Busby, and I'm serving right now as a family history consultant uh, missionary for the B Brigham Young University Family History Library. And this presentation is part one for beginners for ancestry, getting to know ancestry. And the first little portion, on, uh, which is which I call linking accounts, this is uh, primarily instruction for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints so that they can log in with their, uh, with their Latter-day Saint membership to Ancestry and access it through that portal. Um, that is just a, the first few slides. So if you are not a member of, of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, just hang with us and everything else in the presentation for sure applies to everyone using Ancestry. So thank you. Okay, so just a, a brief overview of the classes that that I that will will offer this year about ancestry. Um, this one linking your family search account and menu overview. It's pretty basic, but it runs you through the the menu the menus of ancestry to orient you to where you can find the different features that are available. Um, in the next series, part two, I will go over navigating a little more in depth with navigating from the tree to the summary card and the profile page and navigating around the individuals in your tree. And part three is a deep dive into searching and adding information and sources. And finally, right now there are four, comparing ancestry with family search plus using your ancestry DNA test. Okay. First question is, what is Ancestry? It's a private family tree that you can create or upload into, into their program. It's an online uh, tree that you can access. And a paid membership is required to make the most of the resources that are offered, although they do have uh, free memberships available. The free membership to Ancestry is available to members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at this time. With, um, ac with accessing your partner access for, for that feature, you'll need to go to your browser and go to familysearch.org, campaign partner access. And then it, you'll be prompted to sign into your family, family search account. And from here, you just type in your username and your password, and it will bring you to this to this page, Latter-day Saint access to family search partner services. Since we're focusing on ancestry, when you scroll down, um, you'll see the ancestry.com icon and join for free. And this is a slide that if you, um, I will have these slides available on my website and from the, from the BYU Family History Library website, if you want to see this again, but you can take a screenshot of this. This just kind of walks you through the steps to create that account. Um, it, it walks you through pretty straightforward, but if you like to have a step-by-step -step instruction, you can take a screenshot of this page or access these slides um, through, through that family search, um, excuse me, the BYU Family History Library portal. Um, okay, so one thing that people wonder is, should I, if I have, if I'm using family search to access my family tree, um, should I have an ancestry and a family search account? And what advantages are there? And this certainly applies to all all users and um, family historians looking looking for for um, building their trees. So familysearch.org is a public tree. It is it is not a place where you own the tree. It is a, a worldwide one, one, one tree access. Um, they, they would like it to be a, somewhere where people can collaborate with one another and share the information they have. So there's uh, one, one account for each deceased person out there on the tree, and then they're all connected into one family tree. Ancestry.com is a private tree where you privately own and control 
what you put on your tree and what you see and how you update that. Um, certainly with Ancestry, they provide a lot of opportunities for collaboration and doing research also. There's a, <clears throat> you can access a new pool of people by also having an account with Ancestry and the resources they have. There are some duplicates across different, different platforms, but um, for sure, you, there, there are things you can access on Ancestry that can't be found in other places. Also, if you have a DNA test that you've done through Ancestry, those test results are integrated when you link your, your DNA test through Ancestry with your Ancestry tree. If you're, if you're just joining us, I was having some technical difficulties getting, getting my slideshow presenting, but we're, we're going with this format. And as we, as we go through this, I might have some slides that have some things overlapping. So I'll try to, um, we'll just walk through it and work with it as we have it today. Thanks for your patience. Um, okay, so when you click on the, when you log in, when you go to ancestry.com, you'll be at the home screen, which is shown here. I've, I've circled in red. I've kind of used red and this turquoise color to draw attention to different features and things I want to talk about. Over on the right-hand side of the, of the menu bar that runs across the top, you'll see a little icon that has a leaf shape. And that is where you'll see hints that are available. Once you have a tree loaded into Ancestry, it will start producing hints for the people on your tree that you can look at for research. Um, the next icon is a little, a little um, conversation bubble. And that is where you will see messages. So if someone is trying to communicate with you through Ancestry, um, or you want to communicate with someone else and see the responses, that's where you go to see any messages that have come through on your Ancestry account. And this is uh, fairly new, I believe. Um, you can now toggle between English and Spanish for the, for, the, the, uh, for the text on the page. And so up here in the top right hand corner, you'll see I've got in, circled EN. And if you click on that, you can toggle between that and Spanish. Um, this is a feature that is still appears whenever I log into FamilySearch. So I'm including it. Although last year when I talked, or excuse me, in Ancestry, <laughs> last year when I talked to the, to the folks at Ancestry, I was informed that the, this feature was going away, but I've never seen it disappear. I have had people contact me and say, hey, I don't have this option on my homepage. So if you don't see this on your homepage, don't be alarmed they supposedly are going to be phasing that out. But if you do have it, and this is available to you, um, you can customize what you see on your, on your homepage. When you click on customize your homepage, it's going to bring up this window and there is a list of available item, items that you can, you can add to your homepage if you're interested in having those, that, those specific types of research and shortcuts. Um, there is a up and down arrow and a little trash can icon that will appear in each window on the on those homepage items. And this is how you reposition things on your homepage. You can move your shoebox to the top if that's something that you use a lot, or um, move your quick links to the top, or if you don't have a to-do list. Um, and then you can also delete items that you're seeing on your on your homepage if it is a feature that you're not using. All right, that was a brief overview of the homepage. <clears throat> the next menu item at the top you'll see here is are, are your trees, accessing your tree. I've got a few family trees loaded in mine. I've, I've shown these highlighted in yellow. Um, what, when you load a tree or create a tree, it's going to ask you to name the tree. So you can name it whatever you want, whatever is appropriate to, to what you feel like it would like it to be. And this is how you access those trees. So I, I'm going to click on the Busby family, Busby tally family tree, and that will bring me right into this pedigree chart that shows the individuals on my tree. Um, the next presentation will do a deep dive into all the, the menus and options and when you know how to navigate around in these these people into their profiles, adding sources and all that fun stuff.
but just quickly, that's where you get to it. Um, the next item that you'll see on your trees menu is to create and manage trees. So when you click on that option, it's going to open up this, this window and I've, I've got it exploded a little larger. So hopefully that helps you see it. Um, it will list the different trees that you have when you last modified them. If you've invited other people to join, to, to join that tree, you can invite people to participate in your tree either as um, viewing it only or um, someone who can also edit that tree. So if you're collaborating with a, with a family member and you want to give them access to the tree and you're working on inputting information together, you can, you can do that. Um, when you click on tree settings, that will give you some more um, customized tools that you can choose. And those are going to be um, up to you as an individual and how you want to be able to control what you, what you see on the tree and what others can see. If it's private, if it's public, you can make your trees and ancestry public so that um, other people can see them. This is where the collaboration becomes a, a really powerful tool so that, um, you know, when I, when I go out there and I'm doing research, I like to see what other people who are doing similar, have similar uh, family trees as me in the same family lines, if they have made their trees public, then I can view their trees also. So that's a great way to collaborate with others. So you go to the tree settings to do that. You can also from here, create a new tree, import your tree from family search. So if you have a, a tree that you have linked yourself into your deceased ancestors in family search, um, you can import your tree from family search into ancestry here. You can also upload a GEDCOM file from here. So these are the, the options that you will find under Create and Manage Trees. There's a second menu item next to my trees that is trees shared with me. Now, it, this is if you have um, contacted someone who perhaps they have a private tree and you've asked them if you can view their tree, if they make that access available to you, um, then they can give you viewing rights to their tree, even if it's private. Um, so any of those trees are here, you can remove them from the list and it gives you the options again, uh, the same as before to create new trees, import from family search or upload a GEDCOM file. Okay, I, I showed you where import from family search, a tree from family search was available under create and manage trees, but they also have it as a shortcut on the trees menu. So if you were to click on that to import your tree, it will open up this window, which is similar to what, what it will open from those other options under tree settings. Um, here you can name your family tree, what you want it to show up as on Ancestry. And this is when you first um, do an import from family search. This is where you can type in exactly what you want that name to be. And when you create a new tree, it gives you the opportunity to name that tree too. But if you do want to rename it, just go to tree settings. Um, here there's also a button that you can toggle that checkbox on and off to allow others to view the tree or not. Um, just know that in Ancestry, any living individuals you enter in your tree are hidden. And if you are um, a Latter-day Saint, ordinance information will not be shown on Ancestry. That's associated with um, temple work that, that we do as a part of our church. Once you have named the tree that you want, click save and it will walk you through the steps to upload your tree from Family Search. It will do four generations at a time. And in our, in our next presentation where I talk about, about navigating around the tree, I'll show you how to add additional generations on, onto that in a step-by-step -step way. Okay, the next item on the trees menu is Family History Learning Hub. Probably something that a lot of people don't just naturally go to. I think we tend to just go to our tree and start doing searches and um, work that way. But if you want to um, get some, some information about uh, becoming a better researcher, you can go here. Um, the Ancestry Family History Learning Hub so um, from the, the um, Learning Hub, they'll have different topics that you can, 
that you can uh, learn more about. Um, like for instance, here's one about the census in, uh, you know, revealed about Mexico's population and what information you can find when you do that. Um, so they, they'll highlight some of their latest information and resources, but you can also come down here and select specific, specific uh, topics that you'd like to learn more about. And they'll have little short videos that you can, you can watch and in instruction to make you a better researcher. So that's a great resource for someone who's wanting to learn more about research. Okay, the last, um, the last item on the trees menu, they have moved this from a different location where it used to be. I don't know if you've noticed if you've been an ancestor before, they have updated all of their kind of their background colors and some of their icons and the way they're presenting things, trying to trying to get a little more um, more equality across their platform with what you see. So anyway, Story Scout is something that admittedly I hadn't explored before, but when you click on that, the first time that you go into it, it is going to say, thank you for signing up. Well, I didn't do anything to sign up other than have an Ancestry account and click on the button. So when you see that, um, just go ahead and click on take me to my stories. And that is going to open up this, this window. And from here, it, it is, they're going to create um, story scenarios that you can, that you can um, utilize in your tree. Uh, some of them will have historical events that you can, can say that you want to use or not use. Um, you, it starts with your grandparents which is what it's done here with mine. And then you can toggle through um, some of the topics like Mary Blackwell, my fourth great grandmother was alive during Utah's fem female voting for pioneers. And so if I click on that, it takes me into a little pre-made pre presentation about her. It's got the census information, the background, and then a, and then a story that is associated with with that information in that time that she lived. So from a historical perspective of the, the historical events going on, um, it, it can be kind of fun. They input pictures, they have some facts, and then you can copy the link and share it with, with your family if you want to. So it's kind of, kind of a, fun, a fun option there. So if you haven't explored Story Scout, that is something you can take a look at and see what they'll come up with from the information that you have entered about, about your family tree. Okay, now I'm going to go over the, the menu for searching. And I think this is where a lot of people go to right away is search all collections, which is a great way to start your research. When you click on all collections, it is going to take you to this search menu where you can input information about your tree, about the person on your tree that you specifically want to research. Um, one way to, to do searches, and as, as I mentioned, I'll talk a little more about this in our next presentation, but if you, if you are starting off with not very much information, it's okay. If you just have a surname and a place, you can just enter that in. Um, the more information you have, the, the more uh, narrowed down the, the search is going to be and the information they'll pull up for you. But you can start off with a very broad search also if you want to and just enter in very little information, but it gives you a lot of, a lot of opportunities here. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back over to the live page on this one, I think. There we go. Um, on the right hand side, it's going to give you a shortcut to some of the um, previous collections that you have been looking at previously. Like I've got Canada, Ontario marriages, 1880 federal census. So if I want to do a search that is specifically pinpointed at one of those, one of those collections that I've been in previously, you can shortcut click to the search by clicking on any of those. Also, as you scroll down, it has some common collections that people will use to search um, birth, marriage, and death records, census and voter lists, immigration and travel, military, um, schools, 
directories and church histories. These have been an awesome research tool for me. Um, lands and wills, tax, uh, tax papers, criminal records. It just goes on and on, all the way down to searching public member trees and looking for newspapers. There is also, when you scroll down from the search page, a, a map, and you can go to anywhere in these locations in the world and zero in on a specific area. So if you wanted to do a search in Ghana, Africa, it's going to bring up what information they have. And right now there are there is a 1984 census record. So if you want to know what family search has available in a specific location, you can go through these search shortcuts to get there. If you're doing research in Europe, same thing it will have. And when you hover over these different, it tells you how many different collections they have available. And then when you click on them, it's going to give you the information and it will narrow down the options if there are a lot of a lot of possibilities. And then you can click on the specific area that you want to research there and use for their, their collections. Oh, and also, okay, at the very bottom, it says view all in card catalog. This is going to bring up the general card catalog for all collections that are in Ancestry. So if you aren't seeing what you want with any of this or by doing a search here, you can go to view all in card catalog and try kind of drilling down location to a specific place and time period through that. We'll do more in depth into doing searches in our, one of our future presentations. Okay. All right. Um, in the search bar, there are shortcuts to some specific things. And you saw me list those off and, and you scroll by them on the right hand side in the general all collections search. So these same shortcuts for census and voter list, birth, marriage and death, immigration and travel, public, excuse me, uh, military and card catalog, those, those are shortcuts to those same, same things that you see explore by collection on the right hand side under all collections. So they they, they really try to uh, have some redundancy and duplicate to help you find what you're looking for. But the pulp search menu is a great way to get to some of these that are most commonly used. They also have public member tree search and member search. So I'll show you what those all look like when they come up. When you click on the census and voter list, it's going to bring up a, a search window that you can type information in that's very similar to just the general search but this one is only going to search census and voter lists. And you can specify where you want it to look by, by the um, century. Like for instance, if you wanna just see, only see 1800 censuses, that kind of thing. You can, you can click on those to narrow those category down or just type the information in as you see the, the available windows. Birth, marriage and death, very similar. It opens up a search window for you to type your information in on those individuals and some ability to narrow down categories. Immigration and travel, again, very similar. Okay, public member trees. If you want to search for a specific person, um, here's where I'm gonna move things around just a little. All right, where the, <laughs> in, in my presentation, the way it was set up, it will, these will fly in when I want them to, but now they all just come in together for today. All right, so the public member tree search, you can type in the name of a person if you want to um, search for an ancestor who is, who someone else has on their tree that is public. So if you want to see someone else's tree and the research they have done, you can type in the name of your ancestor here. Um, there's a lot of text on this. I'm not going to read it all, but um, it, it kind of gives you the, the general information about public member trees and ancestry doesn't take responsibility for what is on them or not. And you should do your own research to, to confirm the information you find on other trees that, that you agree with it or not. Because um, that's one of the beauties of ancestry is you can put information into your tree that you believe is the most correct and the most up-to-date 
and choose whether you want to share that with other people or not. On this page is also a section called More Help, and this will take you to some classes on specific things, um, features within Ancestry, like Member Connect <clears throat> and printing and sharing information and an introduction to online trees if you're just, just starting out. So these are great videos to go to as well. And then this over here on the right um, will tell you the difference between private member trees and public member photos and scanned documents. One thing to be aware of, if you do come across a, a resource when you do a search or, or doing research and it says that it's a private tree, you have the opportunity if they have selected it to email the individual and ask them if you know explain to them what research you're doing and that you'd like to collaborate with them and and see if they will contact you or share their tree with you so that is that opportunity is there to collaborate and contact people even if their trees are marked as private there's the military records i think i backed up a little so we're going to go to help next. There we go, member search. Um, <clears throat> member search is also under the search menu. You can search for mem other people who are um, who have accounts with Ancestry and have, and have set up a tree. You can search by their username or, or you can do research by interest. So if there's a specific um, area in the world that you want to collaborate with others on, um, you can type in that location and see if there are any any groups that are in, that are uh, collaborating together on specific persons or surnames or locations. So again, that is under member search. I'll just back up that a little bit. So underneath the search menu, it's the very last one called member search. That's where you can search by name. If you know their username, you can type in their username or just type in their their first and last name and see what comes up. So that's where you find that. Okay, the next menu item is DNA. The lion's share of this will be covered in a little more depth in part four of this series. So I'm not going to go into the, those individually today, but just know that this is where you go to see your DNA results if you have done a DNA test through Ancestry. You can also, um, this is also where you go when you get your DNA information back, it will ask you to activate your test when you, before you send it off. Or if you want to buy another test, you go to this pull down menu, that will give you a shortcut to do those things. The next menu item in the menu bar across the top <clears throat> we'll go over is the help menu. First, we have the support center. Um, from here, you can type in a question and it will take you to their commonly asked questions and answers and articles about specific th things that other people have asked about or that they have put together information. And from here, you can find out answers to your questions. If you don't find the answer and they're pre-written um, information, you can always contact them directly. Under community, when you click on that, it is going to bring up some, I, I call them shortcuts, links to some of the different ways to collaborate with the Ancestry community. Um, if you want to be a person who either needs help or, or you have an expertise in a certain area and you want to offer help, you can click on the Ancestry support community and you can also go to message boards and search by topics and surnames. Under collaborate, it's going to allow you a shortcut to a search public member trees, member directories, and member profiles. Um, under the settings for your account, you can update what others can see in your profile. We'll take a look at that a little later here. The other item that you'll see on here is contribute. If you want to help with Find a Grave or any of the other projects that Ancestry has on, or if you want to share a success story, they always love to hear when things are going well, well for their, their customers and share that with others. 
uh, they would love to hear from, from you. So if you have any input or help that you need or help to contribute, under the help menu is where you'll find it. All right, message boards is another feature that is on Ancestry. Um, just real quick here, you can see you can search by names and keywords. You can search by a specific topic by surname. So you can type, go to that, that letter of the alphabet for the name of your surname, or you can search by category. And as you scroll down, it will show you all the different categories. For instance, right now, under the category Canada, there are five boards with 14 subcategories. So if you're doing research in Canada and want to see if anyone is in the same area as you and they have any, any help to offer or you have questions to ask or help to, to give others, you can explore these message boards and communicate directly with other Ancestry members. And if you have come to Ancestry.com hoping to hire someone to help you do your, your family history, under the help menu is where you will go to find information about hiring an expert. And it will take you to this window and open it up for you. And you can explore some of the paid features that are available within Ancestry. And, and of course, they have their uh, offer for a free estimate here, if, if that is the reason why you've come to Ancestry. That is available. All right, the last menu item over here on the left are what they call extras. And under extras are some of the paid services offered by Ancestry. I'll let you explore those on your own if they have hold some interest for you. Um, there are photo books and posters that can be ordered and printed through Ancestry. Pro Genealogist is will take you to the same page as hire an expert under help. And you'll notice they also have that over on the top right hand side as well. And um, travel, heritage travel. So if you want to join any tours through Ancestry, they have those listed under heritage travel. Any help that you need with downloading their app, they do have an app for iOS and Android phones. <clears throat> click on that, it is going to open up this page that will take you to the opportunity to download those in a link and how to. All right, Ancestry Academy is, is another um, feature that I think is underused on Ancestry. It's something I really enjoy going to. And so I'm going to pop over to that right now. So I can just show you a few things. So these are um, helpful videos and presentations about various research topics. I, they, they generally are, are pretty short videos, I would say anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes. Um, and you can search just about any topic you want. You can browse or click on search if you have a specific topic you're looking for. Sometimes I'll come in here and just scroll through and find something that I want to learn more about. I, I especially like when I'm entering a new state uh, that I haven't done a lot of research in. This is a great place to come to watch a little video about what, what resources are available in different states. It, it's a great way to educate yourself if you are a, an avid researcher or want to become one. They also have resources for doing research outside of the United States. Um, methodology and skills, um, for instance, effective searching for Canadian records, and then information about find a grave, more about DNA. It, there, there are just hundreds of great videos on here. So I, I encourage you to come out here and explore these and, and that will help build your, your personal um, knowledge of, of doing research within Ancestry. And in general, they, a lot of their videos are just for anyone generally doing research, very helpful. You can also um, give someone a gift membership to Ancestry if you have someone you want to share this with and buy their membership. This is where you would do that under extras. It's going to open up a window and you click on it that will give you their different options of the packages that they have available. Ancestry Lab, if sometimes they're running a beta program, right now I checked, they are not. 
but if they are running a beta program and you would like to participate in giving them feedback, this is where you would go to be a part of that. So Ancestry Lab is where they kind of have their experimental new features before they release them generally. Those, those just will appear from time to time. You can visit some of the other sites besides United States or select different language if you are here from another part of the world. And then of course, refer a friend. We'll give you $10 in credit when you share Ancestry with others. Over on the far right, we have hire an expert on the menu. Hire an, exp hire an expert and pro genealogist take you to the same place. So we already looked at that. Okay, next to hire an expert, you'll see the little, the little uh, hints icon. So I wanted to take some time to, to take, take a look at that with you. Um, when you click on it, it is going to open up this menu and these are the most recent hints that were available to me. And at the bottom, you can click on see all recent hints. These hints are produced by the information that you have entered into your personal family tree. And so they're associated with individuals on your tree and you can take a look at these and decide if they are associated with your family member or not. And, and then you can, um, let's see, what's the word? You can uh, have them be part of the resources on, your, in, on that person's profile page. So if you don't know where to start, this is a great place to go to see what hints have been produced. Ancestry, in my experience, always has way more hints than I could possibly go through in any kind of reasonable time. However, I do go here from time to time when I'm just like, you know, I don't know who I want to do research on. Let's see what, what's out there. And sometimes that, that opens the door to a great research opportunity for a family I hadn't looked at in a while. The next window over are messages. When you click on that, it will pull down the most recent messages that you have in your, in your mailbox. You can click on see all messages at the bottom and that will open all of the messages. So you'll see the messages on the left when you click on an individual message, it will open up the, the, um, the conversation back and forth between you and the other person. And on the right will be information about that individual and their ancestry account and their tree. And this is often people who you are have contacted to collaborate with. At least that's what how I've used it. Okay, the next thing that we want to go over is your profile and settings. And you, I've got, I've uploaded a picture of myself. So there's a little circle with a picture of me, and then it will have your username here. Mine is Nancy Busby thirty. That's my ancestry username that is public for everyone to see if someone wanted to search and find, find me as a member, that's, that's what I'm listed under. Having your picture loaded also helps people identify that they found the right person if they know who you are. So when you click on this, you're going to get a menu pull down with a few items. The first one is your profile. So when you go to your profile, you're going to have some options to edit. This is where I added my picture by clicking on the little picture icon. It's going to give me a preview of the different trees that I have, my photo gallery. I can scroll through any of those things here. Um, oops, I must've clicked on something. <laughs> so what happens when you go to the live screen? Um, you also um, have your DNA summary listed here, when you joined, when you last signed in, um, and also your profile, keeping your profile up to date. They, you can keep it as up to date as you want to by ask, asking some variety of questions. And it also gives me my new DNA matches that have come up. And if you want to share more about yourself, it has to do with your profile. So if you want to answer some more questions that just helps them um, know what your, where your interests are and more about you. And, and the information that they can, can provide to you. And if you want to help others, here's another place you can get a shortcut to how to help other ancestry members. Okay. 
this is the profile settings, which is also in the pull down menu. So account settings will take you to your profile account settings. So I'll jump back over there. Um, so over here on the left, you're going to see shortcuts to all of these same things that are in this pull down menu. So site preferences, notification settings, those all also exist over here on the left hand side once you've clicked on one of these items. So he, this is somewhere you want to go to control what how the public sees your, your account information. So for instance, family trees, who can see this? Choose who can see your trees on your public profile. Well, the ones I have public, I said that everyone can, but if I click on it, I can toggle that off to only you. So only I would be able to see it. And then I would save, save that. Um, and then again, DNA summaries wants to, you know, you can control who can see your ethnicity estimate when other DNA matches go to your profile. You can then do a preview of your public profile by clicking on these green letters that it highlights when I hover over it. So you can view your public profile the way that other people will see it and make sure that is what you intended. Um, so from the account settings, this is where you have your name, your username, your email, your password. I have two-step verification enabled. I noticed that was available recently and it will give you information about your current membership and if it is active or not, and if you've ordered any of the paid features. And you can change your username or email <clears throat> or password here as well. So that is under account settings in the pull down menu. Okay, site preferences. Um, this is going to be an area where you can make personal uh, choices about how you want information coming to you, um, how you see information on, on the site. So you can toggle these different, this is something you just have to go through and read on your own and look at them and toggle these little check boxes on and off if you want to receive hints from specific trees or not, um, if you want to display ancestor hints or not. If you're getting too many hints, under site preferences is where you go to control how those are displayed and what you see. All right, notification settings. Um, this is where you can, I can control if people can email me or not when they're viewing my tree and if that email gets pushed to me or not. And, um, and then if I want to see any of the personalized offers or education opportunities that have to do with my profile information that I've filled out, if I want to have those sent to me by email or not, or if I want to have them kind of pushed through on, on the website when I'm on it or not. And last of all is the sign out button, especially if, if you're on your home computer, no problem, sign in or out as you please. But if you're on a public computer in a library somewhere or using it at someone else's house, make sure you sign out when you are done and that will take you back to the, the homepage where you're not signed in. So that is an overview of, of all of the, navigating all of the pull down menus on ancestry.com and just a brief overview of where you'll find different, different features and, and helps and searching opportunities, DNA, hints, messages, all those things. And, and then also at the beginning, we covered connecting, linking your Ancestry account with FamilySearch for Latter-day Saint members. Just a reminder, here are the, the class we just did, linking your FamilySearch account and menu overview and the future classes coming up. And thank you for tuning in today. I, I hope you learned a few new things and we'll be able to make it for some of our other presentations.